All right, so let's go ahead and finally make it dangerous in here and make some enemies that shoot. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blueprint and I'm going to create it with my enemy base. Uh, and I'm going to call it enemy underscore shoot uh, straight. Doesn't like them this long, so I'm going to call it shoot S1. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to do some things here before we start. One is I've been using these sort of diagonal cubes, and I'm going to reset all these rotations on the cube. And the reason for that is it's just going to keep things clean. You're going to be replacing this stuff later with your own meshes anyway, hopefully. They won't just be squares that shoot at us. They'll be spaceships and and uh, gnomes and, and farm animals or whatever. Uh, so I'm just resetting all the rotation because it's going to make our life much easier when we're spawning the different bullets. Now, much like when we had the patrol, I'm going to go ahead and add a scene event, or sorry, a scene component, uh, and I'm going to rename this scene component bullet spawn because it's where our bullet's going to come from. And I'm going to move it, uh, again, we've been using, like, red is it ha is normally side by side, but it's up in our situation. So I'm going to pull it out here on the red side. I want to make sure it is outside of my mesh um, because of damage and collisions and stuff. Uh, and uh, so I want to pull it far enough out. We may have to rotate the enemy around when he spawns. We'll figure that out. But I do want to make sure that it is uh, a child of the mesh. Because I want it so that if the mesh moves, where the bullet spawn moves. I don't want it to be its own thing like we did with the locations. Now, it occurs to me here that we're going to need to make a projectile for the enemy to shoot. Now, we already have a projectile that's pretty good. Um, if we go and we look in the twin stick blueprint folder... Uh, we have a twin stick projectile, and it does damage, and it has a million checks to see if it's doing the right thing, and it adds physics, and it deletes itself, uh, and we've already made it add damage. So all I did is I went in here, and I right-clicked on it, and I duplicated it, and I called it projectile enemy, at least for now. We'll probably parent all the other ones to it later, and I made it bright red. With a simple material, I made a red material um, and applied it to it. But it's it's basically functionally the exact same thing. But we're going to have uh, the enemy here shoot enemy projectiles. So let's go to our event graph. For starters, uh, this is our turret. So we can decide like how many bullets it takes. So I'm going to, again, I have my enemy health that I can set. I'm going to give it, you know, three health. And I can decide how much score it takes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what I would like to do here is I'm going to set a timer by event. Because uh, I want the turret to shoot at a regular interval. And I don't want to have to use tick and a delay. So I'm going to say about 0.75 is how long I want it to go for. Uh, and I want it to loop. So then I'm going to create a custom event, and I'm going to call it shoot, because that's what's happening. And we can actually, instead of typing shoot, I can just drag this up here. So this is the event that is looping every 0.75 seconds, and it is causing shoot. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to spawn actor from class. And what we're going to spawn is we want to choose the projectile enemy that we made. You could even spawn the projectile that you've been using, but you're going to want to keep them separate. Now, this is a transform, so we've cheated ourselves here. We have the bullet spawn. I can just pull this in, and then I can type get world transform to get its transform, which is not only its position, but also its scale and rotation. 
and that is the same rotation and spawn that we're going to be using for the projectile. And for instigator, we can just get a reference to self, uh, which will say, like, hey, where are these bullets coming from? Okay. Now, we don't have to spawn it with speed. We don't have to do anything because the projectile itself already has those settings in it. This enemy projectile, and it's not in this code. It's actually in this projectile movement on the right side, much like our player movement. Here it has its initial speed that it starts at and its max speed. Um, you could change these so it starts slower and speeds up to this number. Uh, you could have it bounce. You can have it be affected by gravity. There's a whole lot of settings in here for how the projectile works. But uh, this right here, this is just going to work. Assuming that uh, it doesn't spawn inside the uh, target. So let's go ahead and look here. The one we were just in is enemy shoot underscore S1. So it's this little gray box here. And I have a hunch he's probably going to shoot this way. Yep, he's shooting up because we made the, the shoot line up with red. That's easy enough for us. We'll make him point this way. And we can see there the bullets are going. If I move into the wing, we can see that my health is going down. I'm losing one health every time I get hit. Now... What's nice is, uh, if you remember way, way back when in setup, we added a variable to the twin stick projectile and projectile enemy. And here we added this base damage projectile when we set it up to add damage. Uh, this base damage variable that we added, we can get at. So when we are in our enemy shooting, it, uh, it spawns this projectile enemy. It returns the value of that specific projectile. And we can go ahead and set base damage uh, because that is a variable that is in the projectile enemy. And so I can tell it to say, hey, your bullets do five damage. So this is why we didn't change anything on the projectile, because we can change it individually on the enemies that spawn the projectiles. You could also, uh, I assume, uh, do something like material and set the material on the projectile mesh and change it to a different material. So if I didn't want it this, uh, this specific enemy to shoot red bullets, I could say, hey, actually shoot... Let's find something that's visible here. Let's do, um, let's shoot green grass bullets or green moss bullets. That should work as well. So now we come back in here. It's kind of hard to see because it's small, but it looks to me like it's shooting green bullets. If I get hit by it, I'm taking five damage now instead of the one that I was taking earlier. Obviously, you can add particle effects and things and make extra types of projectiles, but we could even, if we feel like that that bullet right there is too small, we could even come in here and uh, set the scale, for example. Uh, set the actor relative world scale of the projectile mesh. That should probably work. And we could make it be, let's say, 3 times 3 times 3. Mile. And now it should shoot big bullets. Ha! <laughs> now, now, it just hit itself there because the bullet was too big, so it spawned inside of itself. Uh, we, in our very next video, are going to fix it so that enemies can't kill themselves with their own bullets or kill themselves with bullets on their own team. I'm just going to move the spawn farther out for now, and we'll see how this works. There we go. That's a quite large bullet that it's shooting. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that shooting guy that we just made. Enemy shoot S1. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate him. 
And I'm gonna call this enemy shoot L1, L for look. Because this guy that we're gonna change up, let's give him a different material in here. Uh, let's say concrete maybe, sure. Uh, we're gonna make this guy look at us and shoot at us. Now we have set ourselves up in a really good way because we have where the projectile is shooting based on a location, right? This bullet spawn that is attached to our enemy. So all we have to add in here is this. We want to rotate the enemy to face us. So we're going to set actor rotation and I am adding this right before the shoot. Uh, and I'm going to, in here for the rotation, I'm going to pull a function called find look at rotation, which finds the exact way to rotate yourself to look from one thing to another thing. Well, the start here is going to be us. I'm gonna type get actor location, right? Where are we? I'm also going to copy it. So I have two here. So the first is me, we're looking from me. And where are we looking? At the player. So all we need here is to get the player pawn. And that's it. We could probably clean this up with a, a sequence, but it's okay that it does it in order. First it looks, and then it shoots. Uh, again, it's also set on this timer of 0.75, so it's not going to constantly look at us. Every 0.75 seconds, it's going to turn to face us and then fire. I'm going to go ahead and make our little grass bullet here. Uh, let's get rid of the grass bit. I'm going to make it a little smaller so that it doesn't overtake the world. And uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to get rid of the one that shoots straight. I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, L1, the one we just made. Go ahead and hit play. And notice every 0.75 seconds, he's facing me and firing a bullet at my exact position. Now, you will notice he will happily kill his allies with the way we currently have it... Um, programmed. So in our next video, we're going to look at fixing our damage system so that your enemies can fire lots of bullets without killing each other, and so that you can fire lots of bullets without being worrying about your bullets doing anything.